Well, I guess uh, you figured out where I'm at right now. I'm on the side porch of Juana's, and behind me is the first act uh, that's performing here tonight. We are at the start of the second annual Navarre Songwriters Festival 2014. So without further ado, I'm going to try to snag me a musician or two, bring him on over here so we can have a little talk, and then later on we're going to watch some performances of some of the artists that were here over the weekend. We'll be filming for a total of three days. So hope you enjoy the show. Okay, I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce your name, but uh, this is Phil Ficini. Did I say that? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, Phil is a uh, musician that's playing here at the uh, song festival, you know, songwriters festival here. This is the second annual one. I, were you at last year's? No, I wasn't. I heard about it, but I was too busy out just doing some touring things, you know, around the country and what, didn't have a chance to be in this area at the time. Um, first thing I want to ask you is, uh, how, how, how did you get started in music? I don't know exactly how I got started. I remember being three years old and had been playing guitar for a while. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you start remembering what goes on at age three and just kept on banging away at it ticking off everybody in the house, you know, would you please shut up and, and that whole thing. And I guess that's when I knew I was on the right track because everybody was aggravated so much with it. Now, now, wh when did you actually start, you know, seriously write songs? Well, I was in the studio at age 10 uh -huh. and uh, wrote the very first song uh, that I've ever written in, in my life. Uh, the son, his name was Robbie Gordon out of, uh, he lived in Albany, Georgia, and uh, I'm, sorry, I'm not sure. It was Albany, Moultrie, Georgia. But his father was from Nashville and was a semi-famous country artist named Curtis Gordon. His son built a recording studio in the backyard of their big house up in Albany, Georgia. And I started working with him. He was trying to teach me a little bit of guitar lessons. And my interest was more in the recording studio and watching everything that was going on. And, and what, one day... What, what Tom, um, was it like, like a six, was it eight track or 16 track? I'm not sure. To be honest with you, I was only 10. I wouldn't have known oh, okay. the difference between what was going on. All I know is that every booth had its own glass in its own room. With everything was set up. Everything was completely sound dead. Oh, cool. Yeah, and we, you know, we plugged in. You could plug directly into the inputs in the walls and, yeah. and sit in there and and, you know, he'll give you a countdown and you're rolling. And, and at that point, you know, I got interested in writing music. I wrote my very first song. It was called Do the Boogie, and it was kind of kind of cute. Uh, a lot of the parents thought it was absolutely adorable, but they didn't think that it would continue with me and go on this far. So. Now, um, from age 10 to now, you've uh, progressed quite a bit. <laughs> well, yeah, I would say I have progressed quite a bit. It's um, as... At age 10 recording, I was already in my first band. We were already starting to gig. I made my first professional debut at that age also. I played at an Elks Lodge, and which was kind of neat. It was a little Christmas party for underprivileged kids. But it was the first time that me and a couple of my friends got a chance to get paid to, to play. And uh, so I made my professional uh, debut at age 10. Wow. And then it just kept getting you know better and better from there. And it wasn't um, like something that we did you know, to for girls or to impress people or anything like that. We did it because we enjoyed the music. We, you know, our favorite influences is who we listen to all the time. And um, and then we'd go into the garage and practice and, and mimic what they did. And we we taught ourselves how to do it and what to do and how to become uh, musicians. That's how. Now, now um, I, was I was talking to you earlier and I believe you said that you're working on your ninth uh, yeah. album. That's, that's correct, my ninth CD right now. Okay. Um, do you know when that's going to be coming out? I haven't finished the material yet, so I can't give a date. I hope uh, before the end of the year. Okay. To be with you. Uh, do you have a title for it yet? Not yet. I've got to wait till all the songs are finished to see where the direction is going. But right now, uh, I could be fiction is easy, I guess, because it, the songs aren't, they're not real. Like the, yeah. the, the songs are based on my past, you know. And, have all been about some kind of uh, traumatic happening in my life or even not so traumatic, just something real. And these are uh, just being made up out of uh, just ideas and thoughts, which is something that I'm not used to doing. Now, um, 
how can people get hold of your other albums? Do they sell like on iTunes, or do you have your own website? Or it's actually uh, I've got my website. I, I use Facebook mostly and Reverb Nation. You okay. add on, at Reverb Nation of Phil Crash Facchini. You can go on there and you can purchase any song that you want, and all the albums, all the songs are done. As I finish the song in the studio, I go ahead and post it on Reverb Nation. And that way it kind of helps me go ahead and get the copyright on it where it's done, it's finished, it's mine, it's time the line, it's time dated, and, and so nobody can really mess with it. And um, I don't know if anybody would anyway, but it's a, it, it gives me a, a you know, comfortable feeling that when it's time to start selling the material that you know, it, it's available. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have your own website that, that people can get, you know, go to? Not anymore. When I was with the Geneva band out of Nashville, Tennessee, we had Geneva Rocks was our website, and uh, I don't, I haven't set one up, and, and I didn't do it because I didn't have. Um, after leaving the band, it wasn't the most pleasant feeling in the world, you know, yeah. and uh, I did a few other things, and, and I just never got. I didn't get too interested in continuing to, to do what I was doing, but it doesn't go away. I've got a recording studio at my house where I do all my recording. And when I'm there, I spend all my time in my studio just because I, I don't think I know what else to do when I'm at the house. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems yeah. like what I'm supposed to do. And, and so I sit in there and I'll write or, or play it or I'll build something in there. And, and you know, just it, it is what it is. And I, I haven't really thought too much about trying to bring it out into the, you know, into the world uh -huh. at full swing. However, I was playing down in Panama City last week and met a, a publicist for BMI who's interested right now in, in working out with me, working out a deal, me signing up with him and, uh -huh. and him shopping the material and seeing what we can do with it. So BMI is beat, uh, 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 getting to you before ASCAP, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it is. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's good. But yeah, he told me, he said, yeah, definitely. He, he said with what he can do with what I have right now, uh, he said, I'm already like 75% there. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, you know, at this point, he, he thinks it would be a good idea to see me getting some royalties for the music that I'm writing and, and people are listening to. Yeah, yeah, it's a good deal. Well, look, uh, thanks a lot for stopping oh, and, and, and taking the time to talk to our audience here in Navarre and the rest of the U.S. And I wish you a lot of luck. And I gave you, uh, I'm going to give you my business card and please stay in touch with me. And let me know when this uh, album gets completed. Oh, I'll do that. Definitely, cool. definitely right. do that for you. All right, okay. man. Thanks a lot. Hey, man, thank you. you. Have a good night. You too. navarrebeachtoday.com right here so that's our TV station and uh, that's Randy working it he, he'd love to do any kind of interviews if you feel like speaking here comes Rob the owner of O'Connor's now there he is right there he'd love he'd love to say a couple words <laughs> Rob have you changed shirts since I seen you last so did I I'm sorry Oh,
Pieces, ladies and gentlemen, of the Paul from Grace right here. Thank you very much. And right, and, uh, and to be able to perform that to you, as a rule, kind of like that's your job. It's, it's kind of totally opposite. It's really kind of weird. And uh, and this weekend has been a beautiful thing. And I just want to thank everybody for for uh, supporting us. That's what's been. Yeah, this is this is not work, is it? No, it's not work. We're playing. We're playing this weekend. We're not working. Here's a song I wrote for my wife.
didn't know you wrote that one. No, I just want to start with a cover tune. <laughs> Beautiful song. I've been playing the all weekend. I so. love that song. Every While I'm on the line, so I make you feel. I just want out of here. I've been searching for some pizza. Musicians have been fabulous. Yeah. 